So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this uh, new session. Uh, we are going to discuss about uh, OpenStack one-wide deployment. So deploying OpenStack through wider network links. So uh, this is some work we did during this last cycle within the Fog and Edge massively distributed uh, cloud working group. So we did that with some folks. So hello, everyone. My name is Adrien Lebre. I am the chair of this uh, Fog Edge uh, massively distributed cloud working group. And uh, previously, uh, uh, and uh, I'm leading uh, an action which is called the Discovery Initiative that also deals with this issue of uh, investigating how OpenStack can operate for the edge infrastructures. Hello, everyone. My name is Ronan Xanchirio. I am a research engineer working at INRIA, and I'm mainly involved into the massively distributed working group and into the performance working group. Good afternoon. My name is Pierre Rito. I'm from University of Chicago, where I'm the lead DevOps on Chameleon. And inside OpenStack, I contribute to the scientific working group, and I'm a co-reviewer for the Blazor project. So thank you, Blazor. So uh, the agenda of the talk, we are going to have three parts. Uh, the, uh, maybe the two most interesting are the two last ones. So the first one will just be uh, a reminder of what we present on Monday. So why we need OpenStack one wide. And then we'll make the focus on the real content of this talk, which is the ENOS framework and how we can perform performance analysis of OpenStack one wide. So why we need uh, OpenStack one wide deployment. So maybe, and uh, I'm sure now most of you heard about the keynote on Monday by Jonathan. So basically, uh, uh, we are currently uh, moving toward a new paradigm which is called the fog in the edge computing. And basically, this paradigm can be uh, overviewed as a, a massively distributed work, uh, cloud. So you can have different kinds of massively distributed clouds. You can have the academic one, where actually you try to federate different cloud infrastructure in order to provide more resources to the academics. You can have all the clouds that are uh, targeting the VCP use case, so typically uh, clouds for telcos. And then you have these new trends around the fog and the edge infrastructure, which is related to the uh, interconnection of IoT with data centers. So uh, you can obviously combine all these different models, but basically that's the model that drives our work. So the scenario uh, we choose to uh, investigate during this uh, uh, presentation will be the first one. So it's a quite simple one. You keep everything in the control plane. Uh, you mean you keep every control services in a central data center, and then remotely you will deploy your compute nodes. So this is quite basic. There is more advanced strategy. Uh, we present them on Monday. Uh, if you didn't attend the um, session, I encourage you to uh, give a look to the uh, video. So once again. The goal is to take one scenario and to investigate it from the performance perspective. So uh, the question we'd like to uh, uh, address are what can be the impact of the latency of the strong put? Can we characterize the message that uh, are exchanged between the different sites? How we can perform such experiment between the different OpenStack version and how we can deal with the complexity of OpenStack? So once again, just to illustrate the complexity of OpenStack, you should keep in mind that actually OpenStack is a large piece of software composed of several services. And the question is that how you can deploy those services across different geographical regions. So the work we propose to uh, do and the work we did during this last cycle is to try to develop a sandbox for conducting performance analysis of OpenStack. So I'm really talking about OpenStack, not about DevStacks. So the idea is really to be able to evaluate the performance of a real OpenStack that has been deployed on real machines. So the framework we develop is entitled ENOS. So it's an experimental environment for OpenStack. So the motivation, as I said, is to conduct performance analysis in a scientific and reproducible manner. So maybe uh, I forgot to do that, but we are all researchers, or at least we are working 
with the researchers. So we want to be able to perform these experiments at small or at large scale under different network topology. So that means we want to be able to emulate any kind of infrastructure. So what does it mean? It means we should be able to emulate wider network links, wire links, and other possible links. We want to do that between different releases, and we want to do that with any kind of benchmark. So we uh, build our system by leveraging the Cola containerized based solution on OS Profiler, Rally, and Shaker. And actually, our workflow of this framework is following three steps that will be introduced by Ronan. Thank you. Uh, so, ENOS is a tool to test and measure different configuration of OpenStack. And the first thing you have to do into ENOS is to describe the, the OpenStack services you want to measure and uh, describe the topology of these services so that then you can call Enos, and Enos will deploy that OpenStack over your test bed. Uh, you can see here a really simple, really basic uh, description of resources uh, where you are seeing, saying uh, on my test bed, I want a one control node for all control services and one network node for all network services. Uh, that are running on cluster A, and on my cluster B, I want to pick uh, 50 compute nodes. So next, when you do an Enos deploy, and giving this description, Enos will deploy an OpenStack that truly really follows that description. Okay, this description is really basic, a basic one, but uh, into the massively distributed working group, uh, we want to try configurations that are more fancy, uh, in general, we want to isolate some services and we want to do some replication and into Enos it's really easy. You just have to give the name of the services you want to isolate and also a number of resources and when you perform an Enos deploy, you, for example here you will end with uh, five more nodes that run Nova Conductor. And because we love uh, being hard with OpenStack, uh, we also add uh, uh, something we call the uh, network constraints that the idea is you can define some logical group and uh, define some constraints uh, on the network between communication of these different group. Uh, you can define delay rate and loss, packet loss. So how things work under the hood, actually when you have this description, uh, and also relies on the notion of providers the providers will get a node uh, on the test bed. So here we'll get two nodes on cluster A and 50 nodes on cluster B. And then Enos will uh, SSH on these uh, nodes to install uh, Docker demand. So then you can call Cola to install whole OpenStack services on these nodes. Uh, following that, uh, Enos sets the bare necessities, that is to say an image, a router, some networks and uh, it ends by applying whole network constraints using NetM. Um, actually, we provide uh, three different providers for NLs, one based on G5K, another one based on Kemelehon, and uh, finally a one based on Vagrant. Uh, so at the end of NLs deploy, you end up with a fully running OpenStack that follow your uh, resource description, and now you wanna run some tests on it, so we, inside Enos, we integrate two kinds of benchmark, rally benchmark for control plane, and checker benchmark for data plane. And uh, when we are running uh, benchmark, we also monitoring uh, all, uh, we are collecting CPU, RAM, and network consumption per services, node, and cluster. So at the end of the Enos bench, you can do, uh, and in this backup, and you will get all rally, shaker report, but also OS profilers that give you a trace of the execution of uh, the OpenStack, and also all measure you collect so that you can get it back into uh, Grafana. Please go to uh, read the doc to find Enos project. So thanks for this uh, overview of Enos. So as you mentioned, everything is online, so you can go, you can test it and you can obviously uh, give remarks and feedbacks.
So as I said, the purpose of uh, uh, this talk is to illustrate how you can perform a complex uh, uh, performance evaluation of OpenStack using Enos. So once again, keep in mind these pictures. So the scenario we uh, uh, investigate in details is the following one. So this is the vCPU one. All the control plane is deployed in one central data center. And then remotely, you deploy the compute nodes. Obviously, the RabbitMQ bus is global to all these infrastructures. So what is the pro? This is simple. I don't know if you can do even more simpler. Obviously, you have some cons. So security management for RPC message, poor issue, single point of failure. But this is not the objective of this talk. The objective of this talk is really to address performance analysis. So under two angles, the scalability. We uh, had a presentation during the last summit in Barcelona with folks from Mirantis. And in that talk about network latency, throughput, and pack on the functional behavior of OpenStack. So once again, everything is deployed in the first DC. So Neutron, Keystone, Nova, Glance, and remotely, you only have compute nodes. So we use two test beds, the Grid 5001 and the Camino one. So I will introduce the Grid 5001. So Grid 5000 is a test bed for distributed computing, which is quite famous in the academics uh, uh, world. Uh, it is used by computer science researchers in HPC, in cloud, in big data, and also in networking. So basically, the idea is that you get raw resources. We can call it like a, a real infrastructure as a service. What you get is get, you get really bare metals, and you can do what you want with this bare metal. So you can perform any kind of experiment in a reproducible uh, way. And I'm going to present uh, the Chameleon testbed. So similarly uh, to uh, uh, Grid 5000, this is a testbed for uh, distributed computing, cloud computing, and so on. So lots of fields in computer science. And uh, we are funded by NSF, so we are in the US. And we built it with OpenStack software, uh, and as well as some software from Grid 5000. It's a testbed that can be reconfigured, so you can reserve nodes with the Blazor uh, OpenStack project. And once you have those nodes, you can deploy uh, an image on them and get bare metal access, and that's using the Ironic project. It's a large scale testbed. We have more than 500 nodes, um, including some storage nodes. Uh, we also have 3.6 petabytes of global storage that is configured uh, as an object store. Uh, we have lots of heterogeneous hardware in addition uh, to, to the other hardware. So things like InfiniBand, some SSDs, GPUs, FPGAs, um, low energy nodes like ARM and Atoms. So really trying to cover a lot of use cases for uh, interesting research. All this hardware is distributed over two sites. Uh, one of them is the Texas Advanced Computing Center in Austin, in Texas, and the other one is University of Chicago in Illinois. And so far, uh, we've been helping about 1,400 users uh, in over 200 projects. So if you want to hear more about this, uh, we have a talk literally right after this one, 10 minutes later, in uh, room 208. And so those two test beds, Grid Fessels and Chameleon, we used them to run the experiment for this presentation. And those experiments are fully uh, automated. So they are defined as software, and Enos runs the experiment automatically. We've got around 250 benchmarks, which need about 100 hours to run. So that's, that's not just a five minute thing. That's, that's quite extensive. Um, and the results run on the two test beds lead to the same conclusions, similar performance. You can uh, access the scenarios that we've run from the GitHub URL that is on this slide, and you can also get the results. So now Renan is going to explain the results from the first experiment. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we use NOS to conduct the latency impact experimentation. Uh, so as you can see here on the left, on the right, sorry, there is, there is uh, the description 
of your resources. As Adrian said, we go with one node for control services and 10 compute nodes. And then we set up uh, latencies between these two, uh, two entities. So meaning that every communication that goes throughout uh, the first group to the second group are, uh, pays the cost of latency. And I'm pretty sure that you not in your that latency has a strong impact on the throat put. Okay, you can see here on the diagram uh, measure we, do, we, have, we have done by pinging uh, from the uh, first node, node uh, some compute uh, with different latency. And uh, what you can see is that the throat put really goes down. And the question we are asking is what is the impact for the behaviouring of OpenStack at both control plane and data plane. Uh, so for control plane first, we define some uh, rally scenarios. Uh, actually, these are all Nova scenarios that try to boot a VM and then do several things. And um, the result is that the latency has an impact on the time to, on the completion time. Uh, and not a small one, because if you take land speed, and then you take at uh, 2,000 millisecond run trip time, you can see that the time to deploy a VM is twice the one at land speed. Uh, thing that I may mention here is that we did whole experimentation in an out cache manner, meaning that uh, images are already pulling, pulled sorry, from, from the glands and are cached on the compute node. Here you can see that, as Pierre said, we run the experiment both on Grid 5000 and Chameleon, and we get uh, the same tendencies. Actually, we, if, you, if, you, if you look at the time of, of the completion time, you will see that they are quite similar. Um, the problem with Rally, when you do some tests with Rally at control plane level, that the results, the completion time you get at the end, is something, it's just a time about how long you task, uh, how long it takes to complete, to complete your task. But you cannot find where the bottleneck is concretely. So we also integrate an OpenStack project that is called OS Profiler. And OS Profiler uh, is a profiling library that will uh, provide execution times for all REST, RPC, Python, and DB calls. But uh, if you look at the output of OS Profiler, actually OS Profiler provides an HTML view, and this one is quite EV. Uh, actually, for a scenario such as a Nova boot and add security group from Rally, you end up with 10.5k calls. So when then you, you, you want to find where your bottleneck is, it's really hard because you have to seek into all these calls. So we developed a prototype that is called OSP Utils, and it's simply a set of operators that let you query your OS profile trace to do some filter and then easily find, reduce the trace size and easily find where your bottleneck is. And at the same time, we use this to produce a sequence diagram of the execution to really have all interaction between all different OpenStack services and uh, to get the complete workflow. So on the next slide, you can see the HTML view that is provided by OS Profiler. And uh, so you can see here some RPC call that are the ones that are responsible for the uh, a, a, a more longer time uh, during the execution of Ray scenario. And, uh, but these call are really melt into uh, 10, 10, 10, 10K of the calls. And at the right, there is our at the left, sorry, there is our sequence diagram we automatically generated from our library OSP utils, and we use some filters to directly uh, focus on uh, calls that are uh, responsible for the bottleneck. Uh, here is another view of uh, generated from our tools, and you can see that a blue link are REST call. Black one are for a Python call, and uh, green one are for RPC call. So if you wanna, the idea behind OSPUTs is that if you wanna understand uh, how 
things behave or how things are implemented into OpenStack, then simply use this tool and you will get automatically a sequence diagram. Now let's go back to the uh, experimentation. We also uh, look at the latency impact at data plane. So we go with some shaker uh, benchmark. Actually, we use two, uh, which two, two benchmarks. The first one is called dense L3, and the second one is called full L3. So L3 uh, benchmark runs two, v, two VM on two uh, private network, and then uh, try to generate some uh, communication between these two VM. When you go in the first case, in the dense one, your two VM are collocated on the same compute node, and into a full one, your VM are on different compute node. But what you see is that every time you, a VM one has exchanged a package with another one, the package has to go to Neutron at the control service level, and then go back to the compute node. Uh, it means in case of latency, if you put some latency, you will pay every time the cost uh, of latency. Okay, and so moving on to the second experiment, this is an extension of what uh, Ronan just talked about. So we saw that there was uh, a high impact on the traffic between, uh, between the VMs. Uh, and we can help that uh, by using DVR. So DVR provides distributed virtual routing. Instead of, of having all the layer three forwarding and NAT being done by Neutron, a centralized Neutron on the controller node, um, these mechanisms are moved to the compute nodes and are distributed on all the resources. So this means that it's not impacted by the delay between our first group and the second group. Uh, to do that in Enos, it's very easy. Uh, just adding one uh, key and value to, uh, to the Cola config, and you get uh, DVR. So let's look at uh, the results. So on the left is the previous graph that we just showed, where there is a linear um, tendency. When you increase the latency, uh, you get an increase of uh, the uh, communication between the, uh, the VMs. Now with DVR on the right, you can see that the, uh, the latency between the VMs is almost flat. There is some noise, uh, but uh, if you look at actually the numbers, this range between half a millisecond to four milliseconds. So it's, uh, it's still some noise, but it's, it's very low values. And uh, this is a critical change for wide area. Um, without DVR, it's not really uh, feasible to communicate with those, between those, uh, those VMs. But with DVR, it becomes uh, really like a normal site being on the same, in the same localization. And now let's look at the third experiment. Third experiment uh, is um, taking into account wide area, uh, sorry, wireless networks. So instead of having wired links between the master site and all the VCPEs, uh, we're using wireless links. And with wireless, in addition to the latency, you have to take into account the loss of your packets. Again, this is something that Enos uh, can uh, experiment with. So we configured Enos to go through a range of loss rates from uh, 0% to 25%, in addition to, uh, to the delay. So you get uh, two dim dimensions of, um, of experiments. And similarly to the delay, this has an impact on the throughput that you can expect. Uh, on the, the graph on the bottom right, you can see uh, five different lines, and each one of those is, is a different loss rate. And even increasing the loss from 0% to 1%, you go down from almost 10 gigabit per second to around 6 gigabit per second, just 1% loss rate. And when you go to 10% or 25%, you 
get basically no traffic at all. So very high impact. So what does this mean for our benchmarks? Well, we are, we are in this context in a rally a boot and delete scenario. And uh, what we can see is the more we increase the loss rate, the more time it takes uh, for the, uh, the scenario to complete. And going from a rate of 0% to a rate of 25%, we have about a tenfold increase in the time that it takes to run this scenario. And some of those scenarios actually time out. There is a, a timeout in rally of 300 seconds, and about 25% of, uh, of the, the experiments actually reach that timeout without finishing the operations. Uh, possible solutions uh, for that, we can tune some parameters at the, the operating system level, like buffers for TCP, but also at the OpenStack level, like increasing the number of retries or making timeouts longer for Oslo message, messaging, and that could help in high loss, high delay uh, scenarios. So here, Enos is a very interesting tool because if you know what loss and what delay you can expect in your deployment, then you can simulate that in your lab and tune the system until you have the right settings and then just deploy that um, in your production environment. And uh, Adrien is now going to take over. Thanks. So uh, to be honest, when we targeted this presentation, our goal was to present conclusions. And actually, as every time when we start to make experiments, things are harder. And actually, right now, we are still investigating more in details the results we gathered. So I will give you an example, concretely, on the uh, RabbitMQ uh, messages. So as probably you already know, uh, there are different kinds of messages. So we have the uh, REST API that uh, uh, Ronan uh, showed on the sequence diagram. They were in blue. And we have all these RPC calls in green. And what we discovered is that actually, a lot of time is spent in these RPC calls. So you have two kinds of RPC calls. You have uh, uh, the RPC where actually you want to call directly a, a particular machines, and you have the RPC cast. And I will make a focus on the RPC cast. So basically, the RPC cast, conceptually speaking, the idea is that you send your message in an asynchronous manner, and then the broker will be in charge of multicasting this information to the, to the different nodes that subscribe to this topic. So if you dive into details, actually, you will see that it's half asynchronous, in the sense that actually you need to wait to get the STK, the acknowledge, from the broker before going on on your codes. So what does it mean? It means that actually, according to the place where you are going to put the broker, you will face the latency issue or not. What does it mean? It means that let's consider that the request comes from the client, so that is the remote nodes, and they want to make this kind of RPC cast. So they, they expect to do that in a few milliseconds, but actually, due to the latency, due to the fact that you should wait for the acknowledgement, you will be impacted by the latency. So that's what you can see on the top left. My client will push a message to the broker. He will wait for the SCK. So here, is facing the penalty of the latency, and then the broker will send the message to the servers. So then now, if your broker is located actually on the client side, here, the RPC call is completely immediate. So that's really important, because if you dive into details and if you measure actually the time it takes to perform such a, a RPC calls, uh, the latency will impact a lot. So our goal now is to try to characterize all messages that, uh, uh, that have been exchanged between the different core services of OpenStack in order to be able to solve what we call the placement challenge. So you have several uh, uh, component services in OpenStack. Obviously, the broker is one service that faces such uh, a latency issue, 
but you should think also about glance, about cinder, where you should locate these different components. So what is the takeaway message? So as I mentioned, we are still now consolidating the results we gather. So the message we want to give today is that if you are interested by performing scientific and rigorous performance evaluation, performance analysis of OpenStack, we develop ENOS. So the goal of ENOS is really to evaluate real deployment of OpenStack, once again, not DevStack, but real deployment of OpenStack, and to see how it behaves under the performance perspective. Uh, the other things we uh, also uh, identify is that conducting all these experiments take a lot of times and a lot of engineering effort. And actually, the automation is critical. You need to be able to perform your experiment in a software-defined manner. And that's why we develop ENOS with all these uh, uh, different uh, description language in order to be able to automatize the three uh, uh, steps of the workflow. The deployment, the execution of the benchmark, and the uh, uh, collect of the different metrics. So as we uh, also highlight, uh, this, is a, uh, this has been done under the open science uh, uh, concept. So everything is available. Scripts are on GitHub. You can redo everything. You can just take the script. And if hopefully the provider is already present, so that's been, for example, if you run an open stack infrastructure, you can take the script directly and redo on your open stack infrastructure. If not, you can deploy your own provider. And at worst case, you have to uh, implement a 500, uh, 500 line of code. Sorry. So few uh, points regarding the, 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 the current conclusion about the worldwide deployment. So the control plane, uh, at least for the rally scenario, we perform OpenStack still behave correctly. So we need definitely to, to uh, perform more complex scenario, and we will bring Glance, Cinder, whatever. From the data plane, what we discover is that you should be aware of key components, such as Neutron, and you should know how you should configure them. Typically, if you don't know about DVR, and if you do not configure DVR, it seems to be a nonsense to use uh, OpenStack one wide. So, because we are not operator of clouds, because we are researcher, we are pretty sure we missed something in the experiment protocol. So please, come on and tell us what we missed, how we can improve the experimental protocol. And actually, this will be really good for us because it will be straightforward to add all these benchmarks directly in ENOS because this is the goal of ENOS. So maybe Rally is not the right benchmark. Maybe uh, uh, Shaker is not the right benchmark. We are already in touch with some Red Hat folks to make a benchmark dedicated to the MQP at bus. But that's the idea. The idea is that you can come with your benchmark. We can put the benchmark and plug in and run your own benchmark. So what next? Uh, as uh, Pierre said, we have a different other session. So there is the camera one just uh, after that talk. Then we have the working group face-to-face -face meeting. So if you are interested by all this question about fog edge and massively distributed uh, cloud computing, I encourage you to uh, come. The focus that we uh, plan to do uh, for the next cycle, uh, so the first one is on the AMQP alternative. So we want to investigate how we can and what can be the, the right bus solution to uh, cope with all the fog and edge requirements. And we want also to uh, address the placement challenges I just discussed before. So thanks for your intentions. And if you have questions. So it looked like you were testing uh, network performance uh, virtual machine deployments across OpenStack. Um, do you plan to, or do you expect there to be any difference with containerized deployments, like deploying containers onto OpenStack? I think, I think it's a cool question in the sense that I don't know the answer. But I mean, if you want to do that, you can do that. The real question is that, is there any benchmark that is dedicated to do that? If there is one, you just have to plug it and you can conduct and make your, your experiments. So I don't know. Maybe uh, we can guess that maybe some people, the, the, the folks that made Shaker, will probably uh, provide some extension also to uh, evaluate container solutions. I mean, I guess, do you expect that there would be any performance differences with containers as opposed to the virtual machines? 
I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. Because that, that's some experiments we are performing from the research uh, point of view. Uh, for example, if you consider a lot of containers, uh, let, 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 let give me a concrete example. Uh, when you start a VM, it takes, let's say, 20 seconds. If you start the same VMs under uh, uh, contention condition, it can take minutes to start the VMs. What we discovered is that if you start a, a container, you expect that it will start in a few seconds. But similarly, if there is a lot of competition on the nodes, the boot time for the container can last maybe one minute. So I don't know about the network, because this is the question is that how the network performance is divided between different containers. So that can be a good question, but Thank you. you're welcome. So any other questions? So I think we are over. Thank you, guys. And enjoy the remaining part of the summit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.